Hey, what is up, everybody? This is Mark, and I am so excited to introduce you to our newest set, these dinosaur-themed letter banks. As most of you know, we've made several different sets of banks in the past, and they've all been great, but I personally think this is our best yet. You are going to love these. Let me talk to you about a couple of the different highlights about this set, and then I'll go through the file and give you a couple more tips and tricks along the way to get the most out of this fantastic new design set. So first of all, of course, you see that these are dinosaur themed. Each letter, all 26 letters, come with four different choices of dinosaurs. You can pick the kind that you want. And then of course you can paint them all different colors so kids will really like the variety that you can make out of these. You can also see that they're about half the size of our original letter banks and I think that's gonna serve a lot of you really well. You can make each bank with less than two Glowforge sized sheets of material. That's like an 11 by 19 sheet of material. It takes less than two sheets and just a tiny bit of acrylic, about a sixth of a sheet. So these are gonna be very inexpensive to make. So you can also make a great profit while also blessing your customers as well with something really unique they are going to love. But probably my favorite feature about this new set is the sliding uh, door on the base. And you guys might have seen this around, but we are really proud of these and I think you're really gonna love them as well. They all come with this exact same base. It fits all 26 different letters and you can easily get the money out just by sliding this door in and out. And they come with a loop on the end of the door. So there's a little T-shaped piece that's included in the file that you can put there just to stop it from sliding open accidentally. Or I'm gonna put a link in the description where you can buy some little padlocks that are really cute that the kids might really enjoy to put on there as well to secure their money. Again, I think you're really gonna love these. There's lots of different options for them and lots of great colors you can paint them. But let me walk you through the file together and I'll give you some more tips and I'll answer some questions that you might have. I think you're really gonna love these. So let's check out more about these great dinosaur letter banks. I wanna to talk to you for just a minute about the thickness of material that you use and how many layers you need to make this bank work effectively. Let me take this apart and show you visually because this will help you really understand. You need a total of 1.58 inches or more of layers to be able to cover from this back slot to the front of this uh, door opening here, okay? 1.58 inches. So what that means is, if you measure your material from right here, not counting the uh, back with the tab in it, and measure forward to your acrylic layer, that needs to be 1.58 inches or more so that it covers that hole completely. And as long as it covers that hole completely like this, you're in good shape. You just wanna make sure that this front lip uh, doesn't show any of the hole below, if that makes sense. I can't tell you exactly how many layers you need to use because I don't know how thick your material is. So just go ahead and measure your material with your calipers and you can uh, divide that by 1.58 or divide 1.58 by that thickness and you know how many layers you need to have between your back layer and your acrylic. Let's talk about the order of the layers for just a minute. I'm gonna take this guy off the base. Of course, yours is gonna be glued on, but I just wanna have this one unglued to show you how this works. Starting from the back, of course, you start with the one that has the tab on the bottom, and then your next two layers are always gonna be the two that have the hole for the coins on the top. So you got the back piece, you got two with the uh, coin hole at the top, and then the rest of them will be the ones that have the hole on the bottom, okay? So tab, two with the coin holes, and then the rest of them can be pretty much whatever you want. What I suggest is you start with at least one that has a tree in the back, either on the left or the right, and then depending on which uh, dinosaur you choose, you can put a couple trees in the back, and you can even put one of the, what I call the blanks, one of the spacers that doesn't have a tree on it, uh, just to give it a little bit of uh, visual depth there, and then you can do the dinosaur, and then you could do another blank or trees in the front, and then when you choose however many layers you wanna to use to get to that 1.58 that we talked about earlier, then you can put on your acrylic layer, and then you've got your front ring there of the actual letter. And then of course you can finish it off by putting one or two uh, of the little bushes there in the front or even a tree. 
But I just want to make sure that you see the order that you want to do that in. Again, the back piece, two with the coin slot, and then everything else can be in front of that. I've got a couple tips for you regarding the placement of the different tree layers. This is my opinion, but I think if you kind of follow this along, you're really going to enjoy the way these come out. Depending on which dinosaur you choose to use, I would let that dinosaur kind of help you guide where the trees go and what size trees you use. Let me use this for an example. This guy has a pretty low head and a low tail here. So what I chose to do here is I put a tall tree here and here in the layers behind their head and their tail so that that way they don't block your view of the head and tail there. And then after the tail, I put a short one here so that way it doesn't obstruct your view of the dinosaur. Let me put this one aside and show you a different one just to show you a different way to do it. Here's a, uh, a long neck. And again, because his head is way up here and his tail's down here, um, I put a tall tree behind him and then a short one in front. I didn't want to block the view of the uh, long neck's head there. And you can either put a tall one back here or a short one here, but that's again, the choices you can make when it comes to where you wanna put the trees. I'll give you one or two more examples here just to make sure that you see what I'm talking about. Here's a T-Rex, and I chose to put a short one in front. I didn't put a big one behind his head. You could, but his head's so big, it actually would obstruct almost all of the tree. But I didn't wanna put a tree in front of his face, of course. And then I've got a, a big tree behind his tail and a little tree here and then some, some of the scrub grass there in the front. But that's just a couple examples of choices you can make on the trees and what layer you put them on. Before you cut anything, stop, get out your calipers and measure the thickness of your material. It's really important that you measure the thickness of this tab right here and make sure that this slot is big enough for that tab. The slot size in the file initially is 0.26, so that's probably plenty for whatever material thickness you have, but make sure that you include the thickness that you add when you paint this to make sure that that fits. In fact, what you could do is go as far as to actually cut all of these layers and paint them and then do this one last. In other words, paint this measure the thickness of this tab, and then make sure that it's gonna fit before you cut the base. That's one way to keep yourself safe and to make sure that it works the way that it's supposed to. All right, I'm gonna walk you through the files to help you really know how those work and to get the most out of them. But before we look at the files themselves, make sure you check out the other files that I've got in there that will help, like this 3D assembly tips. Make sure you check that out and read through that. We've also got this 3D assembly image that again goes over kind of the same things I'm gonna show you here in the rest of this video. Just lots of different ways to see and to learn how to get the most out of these. So let's check out uh, the letter B. They're all the same, but this is a good example of how they're laid out. As always, we wanna start by reading the text at the top. Black lines equal cut, and if there's any red lines, that will refer to a score line. Blue lines equal the acrylic piece, uh, and that's just to help you know which piece you're going to cut out of the clear 1 8 inch acrylic. Slot size is 0.26. Make sure you always measure your material before you start and adjust that if needed. We intentionally made it kind of large because we wanted to make sure that when you painted the piece, you'd still have plenty of space in there, even with the, with the paint still being there. But make sure you always measure your... Uh, material before you cut this and adjust if needed. Again, just like I mentioned earlier in the video, you wanna make sure that you add up your spacers and your acrylic to a total of 1.58 inches or more to cover the base hole. And then, of course, watch the support videos that are included in this listing, uh, including the one you're watching now, of course. All right, so let's talk through all the pieces. At the top left, they all start with the same one. You've got this piece here, that's the uh, one with the base tab in the back. And the next two pieces are the spacers that have the coin slot in the top. All right. Of course, this one's upside down just to make uh, best use of your uh, material. You'll probably want to nest a lot of these inside each other when you actually choose which ones you're going to use to cut for your project. And of course, over here, you've also got uh, these different uh, trees and shrubs that you can put right at the very front, which we'll talk about at the end as well. So again, you start first of all with the uh, back piece with the tab, followed by the two with the coin slot, 
And then the rest of the pieces are really up to you which ones you want to use and which ones you don't and what order you put them in. Bear in mind that you do not have to use, in fact, you shouldn't use all of these. You're going to get to choose and make it the way that you want it to be. So the first three are up here. And then the next row are the four different trees. You've got two large trees that go left and right and two smaller trees that go left and right as well. Like I mentioned earlier in the video, I suggest that if you're, uh, you're going to choose the trees that go the best with the dinosaur you're using. For example, if you're using this one right here, his head and tail are quite low. So I would use taller trees and put them behind him right up here and up here. And I wouldn't necessarily choose the lower trees because they'll either obstruct your view of his head or tail uh, or it'll just get hidden behind those. And then vice versa, if you're using like the long neck over here, I would choose uh, short ones in front of him here or maybe a tall one that's behind his head. So based on the dinosaur you're choosing, that's how I would make the choice about the tree layers. All right. Then, of course, there's the dinosaur here. And then you've got uh, these spacers here that I call blanks that you can put in between any of these layers to give more of a, a deep a depth feel. Uh, you can use those if you want to. You can also uh, copy and paste to make more of those if you wish. That's up to you. And then the next one's going to be the acrylic layer, which is the blue here, uh, followed finally by this one here, which will go right on top of the uh, blue acrylic layer. All right. And then you've got your base over here. And uh, the way that this goes together is this is the bottom here. And then these pieces, I'll, I'll turn them with you here just for a second. I'm not going to line them up, but uh, you'll see how they go together. They go just like this right there and then this one goes on top just like that of course you're going to line up the uh, slot and get that perfect uh, the way that that needs to be and then this t-piece is optional but it drops into that hole right there to help the door not slide in and out if the kid uh, wants it to stay shut and of course you can add a lock there if you want in the listing i'll have a, a link to some cheap little padlocks that i bought that are really cute uh, they don't last very long but they're really cute i think kids will really like them so that's how the file works. And again, you choose how many of these you want and which ones you want and put them in the order that you wish. I think you're really, really going to love this. Let me know if you have any questions. And of course, as always, I'd love to see what you guys make with these. But until then, as always, I'll see you in the next one.